Welcome to this episode. It's number six of Inside the Mind. Brett Robinson is my guest today, the Australian half marathon and marathon record holder. As I'm sure you can imagine, we spoke a lot about, uh, especially the marathon, the ups and downs of Brett Robinson as a marathon runner, the Olympics, getting that Australian record, the DNFs, how that's all affected his uh, mental health. And even like, yeah, I've watched Brett from a from a young age and his, his ego, how that's changed over the years and how he kind of presents himself as a distance runner. I won't give much more away though, so you can enjoy listening to it fresh off um, the recording. He's got Fukuoka Marathon coming up next weekend, so make sure you get around his Strava or Instagram or whatever you do to wish him luck for that. A massive thanks to Lululemon and uh, More Than a Run. It's coming up November 25th. If you want to do it solo, you can. If you want to do it with groups of people, check the link in the show note. Uh, meeting in different parts throughout Australia, and I also think Indonesia. So if you're in Bali and going to do more than run in Bali with that group of people, can you please send me a photo? That'd be cool if we have got someone down here listening and also over there running. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the comments about the previous episodes. We got uh, six done. Look, I know I said ten. I'm definitely going to do eight. I do have to go on school camp, though, the last week of November, and... Yeah, we might not get to 10, but I I don't want to, like, overcommit to stuff. I hate saying I'm going to do something and not do it, but I'm just looking at it from this far out, from the 21st of November through the end of November. Might not get to 10, but I'm always going to get you 8. So stay tuned. There's at least two more to come. And, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and thanks to Brett for giving up some time. It was just good to have uh, a mature conversation with him, I guess. Obviously, he kind of does his podcast, and, um, yeah, I just really wanted to ask him some questions that, I guess he doesn't usually get asked. So uh, enjoy this chat with Brett Robinson. All right, join us from uh, Falls Creek. He's about 12 weeks out from a marathon. Brett Robinson, thank you for giving up some time on a Tuesday afternoon for this little uh, Inside the Mind project. No worries. I think you said 12 weeks there. I'm only two weeks out. Oh, did I say 12 yeah. weeks? 12 days, I meant. 12 See, days, maybe yeah. I'm nervous yeah. talking to a big dog like you on this show, but 12 <laughs> days. I did count that before I started as well because I wanted to make sure I got that right. Yeah, no. Nah, um, yeah, crunch time. So I'm kind of starting to taper down now a little bit and trying to feel fresh, which probably won't feel fresh till hopefully race day. But it's uh, th- th- these are the, the weeks I find the hardest, to be honest. When I'm thinking I'm going to feel better, I'm like, I'm doing less training. But usually you still have a lot of training in your legs so you don't usually feel that good yeah yeah you got the fatigue but you haven't really uh recovered from it yet hey how are you feeling for fukuoka 12 days like do you feel less pressure this time around considering you nabbed the australian record last year yeah definitely but i like i don't know i still want to run well and i still put a bit of pressure on myself to i, I like ideally i'd like to go there and do it again and run 206 something so i'm putting that pressure on myself but um yeah, like uh, I guess, like last time, I was still trying to figure out the marathon, which I still am. But I, I was a bit hit and miss with the marathon, so I'm maybe a little bit more confident going into this one, I'd say. Yeah, and will you go like straight off the mountain over there, or you'll come back to Melbourne for a while? Um, so I'm leaving here on Friday, and I'll spend three days in Melbourne and then fly over. Yeah, how excited are you about like the hype of that whole weekend with Valencia the same day and yeah. then um, Zatapec on the Saturday night, like? How hard is it for you to focus on what you're doing and not worry about yeah, like, all the I, other I training partners? About, yeah, I actually did think about that because, like, Zadapek will be the night before. I'll be interested in watching people race, um, but I don't want to be yelling as Jack sprinted down the straight and then trying to go to sleep that night. So, um, luckily, the the Valencia Marathon is uh, Sunday evening for me, uh, so I can kind of enjoy that. Have you got any, like, hot tips? You said Jack already. Don't rate Paddy Tiernan against him. Oh, yeah, it's one of they're, they're both, I think, it, it'll be a good race. I think Jack, uh, sh- I reckon Jack will win. Pat, Pat's good and Pat's strong, but it's it's hard for, I think, Pat to win in these kind of races a little bit. You mean because similar to 2019 where he kind of becomes Stewie's pacemaker? Yeah, like, takes, a little bit. Yeah, so. yeah, the way for Pat to win, I think, is to push it hard and then you have to then be able to drop people which is, is is hard to do so but he just did run a 62 minute or just under 62 minute half marathon so he'll he, he be he be strong jack hasn't got stewie 1500 meter pace though 
Nah, but he, he can close hard still. Okay. Though. okay. He can still close hard. Okay. Are you concerned that um Jack? I, I was doing some notes today because I'm going to be on the live stream for Athletics exclusive. Like, do you reckon Jack's even been challenged the last two or three months? That's like, true. He's just been yeah. winning so easy, and now it's going to be like a big step up to go from those domestic boys to like, no offense to the domestic boys, to someone like Pat Tiernan. Yeah, no, th- that's true because you kind of have it your own way. You can run whichever way you want and um, do it pretty easy. But like, I don't. know probably his biggest test has been in training with us, with us boys like i'm still we're still pushing him so he'll i think get a lot of confidence from that and kind of on, on how to hurt yourself as well so but i remember a few years ago when he had his breakthrough he was just kind of dominating everyone in australia mm. and it, it's good because you can kind of just get confidence up and be rolling and and then you go into these big races and hopefully yeah i think you'll be able to convert it yeah um what about valencia as well got a tip for that Women's? Oh, the girls. The, the girls, uh, is, it's going to be interesting. Um, from all reports, uh, I was just speaking to Nick, my coach, before, and he said all the girls are going really good. Um, he thinks a few 225s could be on the card. So, Yeah, incredible. The fields, we had a look at them and spoke about them on the podcast last night, like just 150 men under 220. I think it's like 75 or 90 women under 230. Like it's, oh, crazy. it's a different it's crazy. world. It's going to be, um, I'm so excited about that whole weekend as a whole. Like it's going to be amazing just to follow it and, and see what comes out of it. Hey, just one more on your uh, training before we get into like the mental health stuff. Um, how do you go? Like I know you did like eight by 1K today. You've got to step down with those faster guys, but you're putting in like way bigger workouts and long yeah. runs. Like you must, does that do your head in? I've listened to your stuff and I'm yeah. just like following your training on Strava. I'm like, geez, that must be hard in the warm up knowing you've got to go toe to toe with yeah. those fellas. Yeah, I know when I do like a like a forty k long run on a Sunday, and these boys are stopping at thirty k or twenty five k, and I'm just like, oh, bugger, this is going to be hard on Tuesday. Um, I just, yeah, it, I do find it hard, and that's the thing I find the hardest about the marathon training is going to those Tuesday sessions, but they're my least important session of the week. So if I have to, I drop off. Um, like today, I was pretty much finishing every rep probably 10 meters back i would kind of run with the boys for about 500 600 meters and then just cruise a little bit uh so i just didn't i didn't have to go and run 248 like there's other guys i think if i'd do them all in 251 or something uh that's a good session for me so yeah i think it's i do find it important though i think having the ability to be able to run 250k reps is is important if you're trying to run 258s 259s when you go to run a marathon so it's something i need but yeah it's something i i dread as well do you think, um, I was thinking about you today when I was preparing for this interview, like how your ego and stuff has changed over the mm. years. And like, do you reckon there was a time where you wouldn't accept that you're dropping back 20 or 30 meters and you would have been like, no, no, I'm winning this rep. I'm winning this set, like getting it done. Definitely. I still, and I still have those battles even today. Like I know I'm 12 days out from a race, but I'm still going, oh, just like stop being a little bitch. Like just <laughs> keep up with these guys. And then I was like, no, Brett, like be sensible here. Like, let's just get through this session. And then like, like right now I'm not going to get fitter from if I run two seconds quicker. So um, yeah, I'm always having those battles, but yeah, I think I'm getting a little bit better at it. How much do you put that down? I was just, I was watching back like track races you'd won and like the celebrations. And I remember yeah. early days, like, you know, you'd call out Craig Motram on Twitter and yeah. like the, it's hard to do that when you go to the marathon and you don't win them. Like you, so you yeah. don't have the opportunity to do the celebrations and stuff like that anymore. But I'm not sure if you would, because it feels like, not that you've grown up, because I actually thought it was very entertaining and great for the sport, but like the progression of you as your ego and personality in the sport of distance running in Australia. Yeah, like I think I was just a little bit of a smart ass and I I loved I like I found it entertaining and like my friends found it entertaining and that's why I did it. But I also knew that it would kind of piss people off, which then kind of also motivated me as well. I guess I did grow up a little bit. I was like, oh, I probably don't need to do that. <laughs> like I can find my own kind of motivation to run fast now, but um I do miss <laughs> getting to do that as well, but yeah, it's like you said the marathon kind of I'm, I'm finishing like top eight hopefully in some of these marathons so I'm, i can't really be calling out some people <laughs> and then and then after a k i'm already 40 50 meters behind so and the marathon it just takes care of itself like you can call anyone out but it's it's you against you um once it gets kind of 30 35k but was that the natural brett and now you've like you know you're acting in this new brett or has it evolved or were you acting that trying to be that personality Mm, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just more people I was around. I was saying, Ryan Gregson and Luke Matthews a fair bit, yeah. and they were a bit like that. And um, now we're just kind of, 
maybe I've, yeah i think i've just settled down a little bit probably a bit of a natural progression as well well ryan's done the same as well like unless yeah. like he's just sharing jen's instagram stories you've got no idea what he's doing like exactly his, his build up for melbourne should have been like huge and it's just like it was a nothing like it almost annoyed me a bit that it wasn't celebrated more and publicized yeah and like i don't know athletics is a tough sport and i think you have to be able to take the wins and losses so like even though i would do that like if i got lost like i wouldn't be sour about it either if i got beat so i wouldn't be sour about it because in athletics you're going to get beat by everyone at some point so i think you have to have that personality where you don't really mind like if you get beat or not not be sour about it but yeah i think gregor coming into a new event probably just wanted to keep it a little bit low-key and just get through it i think yeah rating your mental health out of 10 what score would you give it at the moment um i I think fairly high nine yeah Yeah, i think i'm like yeah like it's a funny one for me because i would say i'm not don't have like heaps of emotions or i'm not really um i'm never really that happy i'm never really that sad like i'm just kind of a bit more go with the flow than than most people which would help your mental health because you don't get sucked into it yeah yeah. Definitely. Like, I don't have the highs and lows. I'm a bit more neutral, I'd say. Yeah. As a coach, like, I, I find you fascinating because you're wearing more than one hat. Like, yeah, you're coaching people, you're doing your podcast stuff, you're uh, the elite athlete you are as well, and probably doing some influencing kind of stuff, you know, that BMW stuff you're doing for Melbourne, <laughs> for example. Um, how do you manage to stay, like, present in each one of those headspaces? Like, yeah. do you know so, what I mean? Yeah, like, but I think it's... Um... For me, like the like I had also always had the running. I was a professional athlete, did that for years, and then the the coaching kind of came up, and that was a good little. Um, even though it was to do with running, but it was a outlet that wasn't exactly running. I could uh, do my coaching, spend time on other people, and it wasn't me thinking about my splits or what I'm doing tomorrow. Or what it was like, I could focus on other people. The podcast became the same. Um, I got to speak about my training, but it was a bit more lighthearted and could have a bit of a laugh with Joel and we could then talk to other people and stuff. So I think it's all those things are just little, I think even though it's all to do with running, they're just, uh, I can put my focus into one thing and then once that's done, go to something else. I think that just little balances through the days that really helps me. You spoke about like no highs, no lows kind of things, but like, do you get stressed at any stage? Um, when... I was I was a bit stressed a few weeks ago. I think it's to be honest, we did a it was to do with the podcast and we we're doing a live show and I got really stressed before that. I think just organizing that. So I haven't I don't really feel like I get very stressed. Um maybe some things like that where it's a bit out of my control and not my natural thing. Like I feel like running is my natural thing, it's what I'm good at, it's what I my job is. That stuff like that mostly comes easy to me um it's the other things that i would say is a bit more second nature to me that i get a little bit stressed so yeah what about carrying other people's stress like you got an athlete who's you know 24 hours out from a marathon and they're emailing you or calling you i don't know how you guys do it like how are you and it could be the same you know take sydney for example they could be doing sydney marathon and you're also doing sydney marathon like how do you manage that side of things yeah yeah i think that's um something i had to learn as i started becoming a coach and yeah, like I quickly realized like this stuff second nature to me, but other people run their first marathon or don't know what stuff is in training, like what a what a float is or what a threshold is. Um, where to me that's just natural. I've known them my whole life, so that was like a bit of an adjustment period. But um, and I even like I was speaking to one of my athletes today, and she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, like I know you go big race in 12 days," and I'm like, "Nah, this is a great distraction for me as well." I use like all that stuff as a good distraction. So even a few days before the race when they're going, oh, like what do I do for this? Like that stuff's good because it takes my mind off my race. Like I don't like to spend too much time thinking about my race, like maybe when I'm jogging alone or thinking about it or maybe before bed at night, but I don't want to spend all day thinking about it. So I was like, I like try to like switch to like, all right, I'm back into the coaching mode. Let's get out of the athlete mode and, and spend some time on other people. Yeah. When you're, with your first marathon at Fukuoka, like, were you yeah. in your own head a lot before that one? Yeah, a little bit. Like, I think I, um, yeah, like, I definitely felt the pressure of that. Um, I know Inside Running, I came in on, on Inside Running and there was a little competition uh, of, like, guessing my time and stuff. And, like, I remember... Sorry. Reading, yeah, no, you no, read no, them all. No, but I was loving it and I, I commented on it yeah. as well. I put submitting, I wanted to win the $500 gift voucher or it was, but it was... Um, I, at the time I loved it, but then I was like, okay, there's like a lot of people kind of interested in this. And, and I think that pressure got to me a little bit. I was, 
probably get yeah, worrying about the wrong things and thinking about all right then the thing starts coming to your head like okay if i fail all these people are watching me um and not, not that it affected my race but definitely it, i think it distracted me in a bad way you were really um uh, remind me i think i got this right weren't you like next to the pacer because you were worried they were like yeah. one second to k slow like you were yeah you've obviously learned so much about the event i wrote down all your results for the marathon today um it's just a and obviously the stitch like that must have just yeah. brought it like that must kept, like even still give you anxiety on the start line or once you kind of feel Definitely. a tiny bit of stuff coming in yeah and like i like i know in 12 days i'm gonna get a stitch and i think that's where the big thing changed for me was um before london last year um a few few days before the race i was dreaming of getting a stitch at night and i just remember waking up like this is not the headspace i should, should be in before a marathon like i'm thinking about getting a stitch i'm not thinking about what i'm going to do in that last 10k or what 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 splits i need to run i'm just thinking about getting the stitch and like dreaming of dnfing and stuff again so um i knew that wasn't right and then in that race i got the stitch and i was able to kind of overcome it started this breathing pattern which helped so then going into fukuoka nine weeks later i remember i was just like so calm because i'm like all right i'm gonna get the stitch i wrote it in my notes like you'll get the stitch um that's fine do this do these things you'll be fine and like just having that plan of knowing what to do was just like a weight off my shoulder so now like still going into this like i just accept that i will get a stitch um i just have more of a plan on what to do where in those other ones like it was just panic pretty much mm. which would make it worse i'm sure definitely yeah and then does it come on later now than it used to like have you got strategies to kind of prevent it later in the no. race yeah so that's what i'm still trying to work out like i say um uh, so Fukuoka last year was yeah so 12 months ago was the first time I kind of really was able to get it get rid of it fairly quickly um, had it in London I uh, wasn't able to get rid of it as well Sydney um, had it again but just wasn't running well that day so it's like I've only had two other opportunities to really test it so I like I'm gonna try the breathing pattern earlier but I don't know if that makes a difference but I think it's just something to do and and I don't know keep in check with my form and and yeah, just see if those things help. Yeah. When you ran the Australian record last year, the 207.31, um, what was the feeling as you crossed the line? Because it feels like it was a long time coming. Like, I felt like even for your yeah. debut, it's like he'll go out, like, especially when you broke 60 then for the half, and it was just like, yeah, maybe tell me what the first initial feeling was. Because when I watched it, it was just like, it looked like relief, but it was, you were so calm. You were like, you weren't yeah. jumping up and down, like, how good am I kind of thing. It was just like, Thank fuck that's taken care of that's kind of what it was it was but it, not even to do with the time it was just like i was able to execute a marathon the way i wanted to the way i thought i was able to um like i didn't it wasn't necessarily that i broke the record it was just i thought i could run a fast time i knew i could run a good marathon feel good at the end feel like i'm pushing at the end like my last 2k was good and, and that's what i've always wanted to be able to do so just the, yeah, had this like step by step process that I wanted to do, was able to do it, and like then the result was just the bonus. The Australian record was the bonus, so um, it was just yeah, a huge relief of being like, all right, finally, <laughs> I've been able to do it after I don't know, 10 or so marathons of a lot of disappointment and a lot of seven, times where I'm wasn't like, it? Seven? Oh, I don't know, is it? Yeah, it was just seventh. I'm including the DNF mm -hmm. at Fukuoka, your first one is number one. And what about the London DNF? the london oh was there a london dnf yeah i don't 2020. have that down here yeah sorry that wouldn't have shown up on your um world athletics profile wouldn't it but i knew you um, yeah okay. yeah so it was like I had, yeah 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 so um but yeah so it was like eight marathons to to then finally execute one so that that was it have can you remember like any races maybe not so much when you're like oh maybe when you're a kid but where you've been like super anxious or nervous beforehand I used to get really nervous. So I grew up in Canberra, but ACT cross country for some reason. I think w once I had maybe medaled a few times at nationals and then I'd go back to ACT cross country and I was like, all right, I'm supposed to win this. And I'm like, but what if I lose? I think that that's when I really w would find it hard. Like the ones where I was like, supposed to win, I'd get really nervous for. And that's it, like Olympics, Com Games, Olympics, World Champs, um, doesn't yeah, So I, I've always been like someone like i think i just what i do in my head is just make a plan of what i want to do and that that really helps me um i olympics 
not not as much um maybe olympic marathon i was i was a little bit nervous i know i had trouble eating in the morning so and i think that was a little bit to do with that but olympic 5k and stuff like i, I did, wasn't really nervous do you get like you turned into like a fanboy and stuff um no no so okay I'll, I'll tell you one story actually what probably made me not nervous was um at the olympic 5k final i forgot my bib to the final and i just assumed they were going to give me a new bib and i rocked up i didn't have a bib and they're like where's your bib i'm like not here i'm like okay we need to print you off a new one and so the whole program got delayed by like 15 minutes because they printed me off a bib <laughs> and i remember walking so we're like waiting in the tunnel under the thing i still didn't have my bib and i think bernard legat said to me he's like he's like what's going on i'm like oh, i forgot my bib and i'm thinking like geez these guys are gonna hate me like i'm just they're supposed to be about to win these medals and i'm like stuffing up their race and they like he's laughing mo's laughing and be like you're an idiot and like i was like okay these guys are so calm right before they're gonna go out and like compete for the medals and i'm just like like yeah i think that's just like they're being relaxed and being in that mindset is just like such a advantage as well and the listeners might not know, and it's different for every race, but I can assume the Olympics, you'd be like in a call room 30, 40 minutes before. Oh, yeah. So like, you're warming up you super get, early. Going to two call rooms. Yeah. So um, I reckon the first one could be like 50 as well. Like it's a lot, and it usually has a bit of a track, a um, bit of like a straight, so you can like do some bit more warm up. But yeah, it's a, a long time of being in there. Plus the 15 minutes you just added. Like, yeah. It gets even longer. Yeah. yeah so exactly. it could really yeah, start yeah. with some people's work, yeah. uh, warm ups and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So even like, like external pressure, does that get to you? Um, so I, yeah, like I feel like I was like going a bit back to that celebrating stuff that I used to do, um, and even like calling out people. Which yeah, like when I think about it now, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm such an idiot. But a lot of that was because like I didn't feel like I would um, care enough. I felt like I was a bit too calm and doing something like that would put a bit of pressure on myself. I'm like, well, I can't call out someone and get beat by them. <laughs> so that was like a little bit of thing to kind of get me going. Like, I think I was a little bit the other way where I'm like, oh, I need to, I don't know, get more aroused. You couldn't just take like a no-dose or something like <laughs> some, some kind of like caffeine tablet, some yeah, kind of stimulant like, to get going. Yeah. Surely Nick would get you up and about though, wouldn't he? He wouldn't like from the outside of looking in. He wouldn't be a coach that you would have. You'd want to have a sub poor performance from. Yeah, that's true. He'd like to know about it, wouldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, that is true. But um, yeah, I think he's never really been like. He's never one to like say before like, you know, run well or you you're gone or something like that. It's more like after. So, um, I think I probably needed that stuff before to kind of get me going a little bit. Mentally, did you ever think about? the damage like those first we'll call them eight marathons would well you ran a 209 in there and a 210 like not not horrendous yeah. but did you yeah. ever think about like hey mentally this probably isn't the right event for me go back and run 5k 10k on the track dominate on the roads over half marathon and stuff plenty of times yeah. like um yeah mentally I, I think as well like yeah like there was some good ones sprinkled in there but like that was like all right I've, maybe i'm going all right at these maybe i know what to do and then the next one would be a terrible one so it was that roller coaster that really was was hurting me so um a lot of times I was like yeah marathons aren't for me like i've tried it let's go back to the 5k or let's like half marathons are good i can make heaps of money running on the australian yeah. roads let's go and do that do them every um, couple of weeks yeah yeah so there's pl plenty of times when it was like mentally i'd get pretty down and like i feel feel with the marathon like you yeah for like i give like two three months of my life of dedicating to this race when you're pulling out at 30k or or like jogging the last 10k because you got a stitch it's it really plays in your head and you're just thinking like what's the point of this did you um well how'd you get yourself out of those like down slumps and keep coming Nick, back yeah like it, Nick was really good with that. Like he, he always had like belief that I would be able to do it. Um, he would after every single one, he's like, "All right, we need to just figure this problem out. Like, let's try a new thing with the stitch, or, or, or like, what what can we do different to try to make that happen?" Um, he would. He was good that um, he was like, "All right, Robert, like let's just find a race." Like even after Fukuoka, like I pulled out, but I raced probably like three weeks later. I ran a ten k in Geelong. Like he's like, "Let's just find a race so you got something to target on." Um, I think if I just hit away and and did nothing and just trained for a little bit that's when i really would have suffered but i think having those little targets along the way to get me back into the swing of things was uh was really helpful you get one back on the board doesn't have to be like a huge yeah. race but just like just yeah 
kind of expose the talent you've got there and just be like, it's still here. We're just got to figure oh, it's out. It's just like, yeah. yeah. And like, like I, I finished, I DNF that, um, London marathon in 2020 and then came back to Australia and I ran 61:30 in Launceston. Like I reckon it's literally one of my best runs, I reckon. Um, and like, that was just, I just like wanted to get back and show everyone, like I'm, I'm still a good runner. Like it wasn't, I you know, just DNF and like, but I was like, I can still do this. Like I had to prove to myself and I feel like to prove to everyone else as well. Yeah, so you definitely do pay attention to like, well, not pay attention, but you're like you, that external pressure yeah. and expectation on you, you want to kind of justify with your performances. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like, I don't know, athletics and like marathon running, like everyone has a short memory as well. Like I feel like you can, well, it's funny, like you can ha- you can have a bad race and people forget about your good ones. But then also at the same time, like I ran, when I ran 207, I um I struggled for a couple of months after that and like people kept saying me yeah but you know you ran 207 like in December and I'm like yeah it's like March now like it's like I, I want to forget about that and like start moving on to the next thing as well so it can go a little bit the both ways when yeah I think you have to listen to yourself a lot more than than to what other people are saying because they kind of can tell you what they you want to hear too so internally this this is going to come across as a really weird question because I've only run 219 and I'm not really good at the marathon. But when you see your 29s and your 210s, although they're still quick, but considering you're like a 60-minute guy or 59-minute guy, double that, add 10 minutes, if I did that, that would be a failure. And Bruce and that would get into me and be like, so even though like you're like, yeah, the 29s or 210s are kind of like there, do, how do you look at those performances? Um, yeah, but uh, like it's hard because the 209 fifth. 52 um at the time it felt like a breakthrough for me mm. um even though uh, two months later i ran 207 um but then when i ran that 210 in in uh, like six months later in this year that felt like a failure yeah okay. um, so then yeah. now that i've run 207 like those times feel like a failure but i just wanted to at, the, at those times i just wanted to try to chip off some time and and run a pb so they felt good at the time but looking back like yeah, I, I feel like I should have been running 207, 208 in plenty of these races, but I was just, things were going wrong. Yeah, but you're not sitting there going content like, hey, I'm a, two, I'm a 210, 209 guy. It's just like, you know, there's way more to kind of get out internally. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And like, I just think with the, um, yeah, obviously running 60 minutes for a half marathon, running um, some of the sessions I was doing, like I knew there was more there. So uh, it, yeah, even though like, yeah, so those times like I was kind of happy, but I knew if I really nailed it, it would be a lot better. And I think that was, that was the relief in Freaky Road because I felt like I finally had nailed it and run what I was supposed to run. Yeah. Tell me about your uh, mental space after the Olympics. Like, hot day, 66, 224. Um, I guess privately there's probably a lot of people in message groups like he still he hasn't figured out this stitch thing. Like, mm. it's this is the biggest stage. Maybe you should go back to the 10Ks. It must be hard seeing guys run past you that you could you know potentially beat in every other distance and and on your good day in a marathon as well and then they chuck in a hotel room for two weeks by yourself like, you think about it yeah can't be fun. um yeah to be honest it was just embarrassing like i yeah it's like one i took really hard because i think like obviously the olympics is a bigger deal than anything else uh wearing the australian singlet and then i'm run like jogging the last 20k pretty much or the last 15k and just even in the race like it just feels so frustrating and um the same thing like i'm thinking like even yeah with 10k to go i'm like think about what my future is going to be like if it's going to be in the marathon and like that's not what we should be thinking about at the olympics like you just want to be getting the most but i just physically felt like i couldn't um so definitely that was a bad time like i think if you see my instagram um it's probably the first time i've done a proper big caption about it uh, and just one real Dave me to well, be honest. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Where well, I'm not really one to do that. Like I just kind of more have fun with Instagram. But this was like I just felt embarrassed, and I don't even know why I did the um, did the caption. I don't know if it's to get a bit of sympathy from people or what. But but to be honest, the amount of people that reached out to me was uh, like that's what it, it made me feel a lot better. Uh, heaps of people just send me messages or like be like hey i got a stitch or my sister's boyfriend gets a stitch like do you want to contact him or something like that? like i would have had close to 100 people with trying to help me with my stitch not just supporting me like saying hey this is doctor this is physio whatever um at the point i'm like geez now i've got too many options yeah. of what to do but um yeah that's what really that really made me feel a lot better 
Did you have many people like write to you and be like, hey, yeah, it didn't go well, but we still don't think any less of you. Like we still love you. You know what I mean? Like, because yeah. sometimes oh. we think we're embarrassed ourselves or we'll let people down. And it's just like, they, they don't care. Like I people know, closest I to know, us. I know, yeah. I know. Everyone's like, I think way more self-obsessed and think that people care what yeah. they do. It's just like, like all these people message me going, hey, like so proud of you for like just making the Olympics. And I'm like, yeah, like I know it, it is a very good achievement. Um, I want more than that. But mm. yeah, like when I think about it, yes, like it is good and it is good to be there. And I appreciate that support too. It's that balance for you though, isn't it? Because it's like, yeah, the very top of the tree, high performer, doing it for a job. It's not like a recreational guy you coach who just wants to yeah. run a Melbourne marathon and break three hours and they run 301. Yeah, and like I've, I've made the Olympics. I don't want to just go and make the Olympics. I want to go and finish high and, and be competitive um, or just run something that I feel is worthy, not a... Uh, yeah, but it's still, like, I do appreciate those people that reach out because it, it, it still does mean a lot. What about, um, maybe not so much at Falls Creek, or maybe it is at the moment, like, your day-to-day life, what do you do to look after your mental health? And it could be, like, small things like, you know, Ben Buckingham the other day was, he makes sure he goes to a walk in the morning just to, like, clear his head. It's like an eight-minute yeah. walk to the gym kind of thing. Or um, I was saying on one of the episodes that I just don't make any decisions in the first five minutes when I wake up because I get a shitload of, like, negative thoughts when I get out of bed. And, like, mm. the, the world's just, like, a shocking place to be in. And then I'm just like, nah, don't think about it for five minutes. Wait till you have a coffee. Go again. But, like, some of the things that you do that you might not actually think are valuable to our listeners but are good for you and your mental health. Yeah, so... Um... I'm huge on sleep and um, like I, I really try to get good sleep each night but I think before I sleep every night I do either a breathing thing or a meditation thing and I think that's something that's good for either just clearing the day or and then also helping me sleep at night. So that's something I've probably been doing for, I don't know, a year or so um, but before that I was always doing like this visualization before um, my races. I'll do like a week or two of it. So. Um, it's not a brand new thing, but uh, yeah, the last year I've just been pretty much every single night I do some kind of thing just to help me wind down. And it's guided? Yeah, so I have, like, I, I have an app um, and yeah, put, put headphones in and then and listen to it. Um, I've yeah found some other things like I listen to the Emma Murray podcast and she's like a mindset um, p- performance coach, I guess. And yeah, I just found some really good tools from her and like you can listen to some of her sleep things for free on soundcloud but i just pay for an app that i think is pretty good what's the app called maybe i know if i don't um, ask you people be asking me yeah it's called open okay and every right. night religiously you'll do that i would say six out of seven nights i do it yeah if you've gone out and had a couple of beers though you're not doing that before jumping yeah yeah it was, sometimes if my no nah, if my girlfriend's sleeping over um i just I don't know. I don't want to do it with her because she just, like, I don't know. I feel like it's just like if, if we're both just doing it and it's just, I don't know. I won't concentrate, I reckon. No, this is the modern man. You're not embarrassed about it, are you? No, n- yeah, I don't know. Maybe I am a little bit. It's funny because, like, I talk about it, but I just never do it with her. Yeah, okay. What else do you do in your day? Surely it's more than just meditation. But, or what do yeah, you visualize? Well, like, is um, it it's racing more stuff? Of a, it, that's like a guided thing as well, but it's um, pretty much about my running and about a race coming up so that's why i only do it before races and that's like scientists scientifically proven too isn't it like it is a performance yeah. enhancer yeah definitely um but yeah then i think just like i i did use i was doing this when i first read uh, listened to the memory podcast but try not to be on my phone in the morning like until i'd like kind of had my coffee uh, i've probably got out of that ha- habit a little bit where i'm back i wake up and i go through instagram which is definitely not good but um yeah, I, th- I think one good thing is if, if I can stay off my phone for at least 20 or 30 minutes in the morning um, and just, yeah, I don't know, kind of sit in the sun and drink my coffee, I think that's something very good. But um, also, like, I feel like my running is a bit of, like, time to myself too that, that definitely helps. Like, uh, I run in Melbourne, I run a lot by myself. So I'm just there kind of in my own thoughts and can think about whatever I want. So usually I'm taking it to thinking about a race or thinking about i definitely will try to keep it a positive thought like yeah you, you have music going as like the background no, no just no. nothing I, I i never listen to music when i'm running yeah never never interesting what about um you surely you're sleeping with like do not disturb on and stuff on your phone yeah yeah definitely yeah so yeah my phone i think goes to um night mode as soon as the sun goes down and then do not disturb probably from like nine thirty or so yeah 
do you have uh, like you kind of said about rules about not checking it for 20 or 30 minutes but I can only imagine what your Instagram requests folder like like how much do you respond and check that stuff and I can imagine you get some deep stuff as well like you kind of it's going to be hard to be giving of yourself in so many directions yeah um, and I think there's times when I'm probably more keen to do it and times when I'm not and so yeah if people message me and I'm like I don't know in that mood to be replying to people and talking to people um, I try to give as much as possible like I know a lot of young kids reach out and asking for advice and stuff so I, I definitely try to get back to that but um, there is times where I just kind of need to just get away and just and not do it. And probably in the lead up to races as well, I probably go a bit more quieter and I'm replying to people and just let it go by for a few days. But um, yeah, I try not to get too distracted by that stuff. Yeah. Do you um, see a sports psychologist like when you're making no, teams and stuff? Or I, I don't. Um, so I'm, but it's I, and I don't know why I haven't because I'm very interested in it and I read a lot about it. I um, like I follow a lot of people on Twitter about, I would say about performance psychology and it's something that I'm interested in, but I've never actually seen one. I tried to see Emma Murray once, um, but she was away and then I just never ended up seeing it. But um, I know athletes I train with that do and they think they're good too. You think the stigma of that's changed over the years? Like take go back 10 years when you're winning track races, you think it's different now? Definitely. Um, I actually am doing a study right now with a, about this um, topic, but and they asked me that question. I was like, back in the day, it was so bad. Like we would, like we would call people head cases and stuff. Yeah, mentally and, weak. Yeah, yeah, mentally yeah. weak. And like it had to be tough, and and that's soft. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like I know uh, someone who saw a sports psychologist like ten years ago, and I knew about it, and they're like, oh, please don't tell anyone about it. Where now it's like a good thing people like see that there's benefit to it and, and it's not being weak it's that you want to just improve um so it's definitely it definitely has changed and and that's definitely a good thing when you say you read stuff about it like are you reading just tweets or have you actually got like hard copy books and stuff and you'll you'll dive deep into it just tweets and threads usually yeah just a real like fast hit me kind yeah, of stuff yeah, fast. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know not reading a big uh Nah, big document on it, yeah. yeah it's interesting and it's like surely do you think AA should make you when you make a team like say you're say 10 years time you're not running but maybe you're like the head coach like everyone who gets to go to the qualifier or everyone that qualifies you made the team it's like maybe just this is a hoop you got to jump through yeah if you yeah, want to book the second like, or third appointment you can yeah but, maybe that's a good idea yeah. yeah like everyone has one and then you can there's the it's available there if you want it. Um, I think it's a hard thing to force people to do if they don't yeah. want to do it. But, but maybe I yeah, just say check in for this one time and then there's the options there if you want it. But um, yeah, just even just having the tool more available to people. Um, yeah, because like I've been on teams and it's not like you know who the psychologist is or you know that it's there and then you like I hear a about it. Different one every like, team. That'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you think about during a race when things get hard? um pink flamingos i don't know if you've heard yeah. that story no. um yeah i was before london last year i so i think something i always did was i would try to not look at the clock um and just not worry about the pace so definitely after my first vicar waker when i said i was running next to the pace or sometimes in front of the pacer and i was just getting way too obsessed with the pace so for my next one i'm like all right I'm not looking at the clock and i'm just gonna like kind of think about other things so i'm thinking about like either I think about my dog or my friends or like all these like kind of happy thoughts and happy memories I would try to think of. And then um, before London last year, I was seeing this massage therapist and she was just like, you know, when it gets hard, just think of something stupid like pink flamingos. And so I was like, all right, I'll just think of pink flamingos. So I told that story on the podcast and now like someone had a sign for me at, at uh, Gold Coast saying, think of pink flamingos. Yeah, right. um, but it's just like something like that. For me, I feel like if once it gets um, really hard or like towards the end of a race, second half of the race, I kind of go to my form and making sure my arms are swinging right, um, checking on kind of what my torso is doing just because to do my stitch. Think about what my feet are doing. Um, and then I start thinking of these stupid thing so it's checking on myself and then just thinking of oh, let's distract myself for hopefully 20 30 seconds and i can get whatever down the road and 
then I come back to it, just do that process again. If I start to feel pain, um, I try to feel like I break down the pain. So, and then, so I'm like, going, all right, what's, what's the pain? It's like heaviness in my quads or burning in my quads. And I'm like, all right, let's think about it. Is that really that bad? Probably not. It's probably heavy. You're running 25K in a marathon. You probably should be feeling like this. Um, so kind of I try to come to terms with the pain. Um, and then I just imagine my breath, I think, going into where that muscle is. So going into my quads and giving oxygen to my thing. Just patching it up, patching yeah. up the pain. What about the boring stages of the marathon, like in the early stages? Like when things are going good and it's like almost hold yourself back, like what goes through your head then? Yeah, um, I think like it helps that I have these like pacemakers and I know what pace mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm just really in those boring stages. I'm trying to switch off as much as possible, take my mind to somewhere else and hopefully I, I wake up 8K down the road. Yeah, go to sleep. Um, we spoke about like not talking to a sports psychologist, but do you talk to anyone about your mental health or you feel like you've got it so um, well under control it's not something that comes up in your conversations with people close to you? Yeah, I'll tell you... Um, yeah, like I don't want to say I've got it well under control and I just know what I'm doing, but I think I just have a good group of friends around me, a good group of training partners around me that we can be pretty open about that stuff and, and just if someone's struggling, we're, we're able to just talk about it and, and be pretty good about it. Have you got things that you notice that you do when your mental health isn't that 9 out of 10? Like are you just a um, bit of a prick to be around or short with people or like I'm just thinking about the triggers that my wife would see pretty regularly. Yeah. Not regularly, but like, you know, when I haven't had enough sleep or whatever, it's just like I know I'm a prick to be around and just like a smart ass kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I'd say I'm a bit more, um, yeah, short-tempered and a bit snappy um, when I'm kind of thinking. If I have something on my mind and then like oh, my girlfriend's trying to speak to me or something like that, I might just be like, I feel like I don't got time for that. I'm just what's in my mind is what's occupying my whole life right now. Yeah. Last one, Brett, what's your brain do with uh, different runs? So like an easy jog, you kind of explain it. Can you kind of just let it wander? But like, do you come off like hill reps or a threshold or a big, like that big one you did last Friday? Give us that in detail and just tell us, and then we'll maybe talk about the different runs. But what, what's your brain do after that? I think you covered like 39K, huge workout. Unpack it for the listeners. And then um, yeah. tell me what you think when that's done. Yeah. So yeah, big workout. But I, I don't know, I'm probably just, especially in that session which and i it's like such a major session in my in my program like this is like the kind of indicator of how i'm going to go or how the training's been if if i'm handling it fine so um that is probably a little bit of a relief that i'm kind of through it it's i'm like i've finished my whole training block let's move on like we now the taper starts and and um so closure yeah a little bit of closure on, on the block so i'd say so i'd say it's a relief but also like I feel like I nailed that session, so a lot of confidence and 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 feeling good. So an hour, like medium maybe. Yeah, an hour. One um, minute rep. Oh no, eight. You explain it. It's your workout. Yeah, 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 yeah. So an hour at um, yeah, it, it's like I'd say three fifty fives, which is a fairly easy pace for me. I mean, I'm doing it in alpha flies, so three fifty fives and alpha flies is pretty easy. And then um, I'd go straight into eight k at three oh five. So I just wanted to be a little bit slower than. Um, race pace and then 1k float which was 340 20 minutes a minute on minute off so i'm going well under marathon pace and then back over 1k in 330 and then 5k hard so the idea is to kind of tire myself out and then run a 5k hard which is kind of like the marathon will be like get to the finish line kind of vibes when you're going yeah. to it 37k yeah. yeah empty the whole tank yeah do so you say you're kind of like content the blocks over but then was it Collis with you on the bike? I saw a little video. Like, does he act the same way? Or is he, like, up and about? Like, we're going to smash this in two weeks kind of thing? Uh, no, I don't think anyone I'm around is ever really like that. I think we're we're not like, all right, yes, it's a training session, nailed it. Like, <laughs> woo. Um, I think we're more like, all right, great, we've ticked that off. Things are going well. The big day's in two weeks. I think that's more what we're thinking about. It's like, I think everything is just about ticking it off doing as best as you can um and like I, as well with the marathon like i think it's like two months of of training that matters it's not like i can nail that se- i've nailed that session before and run bad so it's not really it doesn't matter what i do in that session yeah what about when you come off other different sessions like say you got hills or the 1k reps or a threshold like what's your mind do after those yeah well i think a lot of them i do with um my training partners so i you can definitely tell 
like we, we warm up for hills or something like that. everyone's a bit quiet and just like know the jobs ahead and then once everyone has a good session you can tell them the warm down everyone's laugh and having a good time so um definitely yeah after a good session a lot more positivity gone around the group waverly track that would get a bit like the ego would come back out there wouldn't it <laughs> yeah yeah a Big groups a couple of young kids kicking around usually yeah. photographers yeah yeah um yeah good weather and everyone got their shirts off and having a good time but yeah definitely it's uh yeah i don't know i think it, all of us now have done we've trained together for so long um no one no one's allowed to kind of run a fast rep and drop everyone like you'll get told off so i think it's a it's more of we're getting through this as a team um no, no matter what session we're doing i think yeah um, any other resources, any other things, any other questions you wish I asked you about your mental health, which you think could be um, good info for the listeners out there? Um, no, I think we've covered it pretty well. Like, yeah, I think I think for me, I'm just trying to have a flexible plan in place for everything I do. For everything, yeah. I, yeah, and it has to be flexible. It can't just be this is the plan because if you go off that, um, it's bad. So it's a flexible, it's, it, there's, there's room for, for things to go wrong or not wrong, but either way a little bit. So I think that's what helps me. But then like, are you always, whatever it is, putting things into perspective? Like you said, you know, no highs, no lows kind of thing. Is that because, or like a bit of gratitude coming through there where you're like not looking at the negatives, the positives, like have I kind of got that in summary. Maybe yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see you seem so relaxed. Like, is that yeah. because you're just like, oh, I'm not worrying about this. Like, it's just this workout doesn't dictate the race, or I'm not getting up and about that because it's more opportunities, or whatever it is, kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know if I just made my like chose for my personality to be that relaxed kind of person. Like, and now I am that person. I keep being mm. that person a little bit. So, um, yeah, I just think there's there's things in my life I can control and things that I can't. So. Um, the ones that I can control, I just try to do them as best as possible. And then the things that if they that I can't control, if they're not going the right way, I just, I don't know. I just give myself this belief that things will eventually work out. Good, Brett. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a, uh, yeah, time goes quick, 45 minutes talking about stuff. So I really appreciate that. Good luck next uh, weekend. Not this Thank weekend, next much. weekend at Fukuoka. I know there's going to be so many listeners, so many uh, fans of Australian distance running. Uh, yeah paying attention to what's going to happen potentially another australian record no pressure on that at all but yeah, yeah you've seen the fields yeah i've, I've seen the fields. they so just I love inviting we've... people back don't they for quite yes yeah i know i know it'd be good so um yeah re- really looking forward to it i think a good thing about for me Fukuoka is that i'm kind of in it to win it as well yeah. like I'm, I'm kind of in those top few where you can go to london marathon but like 5k in i'm nearly a minute back so it's um it, it's a lot i don't know i feel more involved in this race well, yeah, you get to be the racer as well as the, yeah, the participant exactly. kind of thing. Which, which, which helps so much towards the final stages. And Stewie Payson, he we've is. had a watch. He is, yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. Uh, I've got a spare watch I'm going to give him, I reckon. How far is he going to go? I think he'll go 20 to 25k. Yep. And do you know pace yet? Or you wait and see weather? Uh, it's going to be 63 minutes through halfway. Good. So I'm getting excited. It's going to yeah. be a good day. Um, and then will you look to run another marathon before Paris? No, nah, I won't. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll kind of pack it up and and focus on getting ready for Paris, but which I think will involve some shorter races. Um, maybe do a little bit on the track or just do a little bit of training with the boys, um, just to make sure I still got that leg speed, and then really put in a good block before Paris. Hey, well I've got you here, and I am still recording, so be careful with this last answer. But I got this new segment where I say uh, whispers that have come across my desk. There's been a couple of big whispers coming in recently about like a rebranding of a um, uh, elite training group in Melbourne and potentially like Paul Robinson going into like a, a coaching position. You got anything oh. for me? Can, can you <laughs> add, any, add any fuel to fires and stuff? Um, nah, not that I've, oh, okay. I don't know about that. Sorry. You know, I didn't think about big moves, like big athletes moving brands. Um. No, no whispers. I don't, I'm not, I'm like I'm, you feel like I'm holding information. No, I saw your face I, when I said it, and you, you were yeah, genuine. Nah. Yeah, I didn't know where you were going for. Okay. I thought you were saying rebranding a Melbourne Track Club, and I was like, nah. And then Paul Robinson threw me off even more. So nah, I don't, don't really know. Sorry. Okay, thanks anyway, Brett. Thanks again for your time. And no now worries. I am gonna stop the recording. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>